Okay. So today's topic is introduction to the global world and becoming a global professional. Now, how do I define global professional? I don't really, it doesn't really mean that you have to leave your home country and go somewhere. You can be a global professional wherever you're working. To me, somebody who's a global professional is actually someone who can fit into any country and any criteria from wherever he or she is working. So even if you're working in India, as long as you have a global idea, perspective, knowledge, understanding, you are a global professional. And that's what I'm able, um, I'm going to talk about today in this session. So let's start with who am I? I'm sure you've seen this picture on LinkedIn a lot of times. My name is Nadina Ngori. I'm a chartered accountant from India. I'm a CPA from the United States. I come from a very small um, town. That's me in my childhood. You can see how grumpy I was. I've always been this grumpy. That's my brother who is super sweet and my biggest support system has always been my family. So that is me as a kid. You can pre pretty much make out that uh, I did not have a very um, strong background. You can probably see that I wasn't very confident, that I wasn't very smart looking, etc. This is where I come from, Baudia. Uh, it's in West Bengal. And uh, this is where I come from. This is my hometown. It's about three hours from Calcutta. Back in the days when we were growing up, we used to travel three hours in a day uh, to get to school. And three hours one way and then three hours the other way because my parents were very particular about, you know, taking um, education in a good school. So that's actually where I come from. When I was 13 or actually 14, that's when my family moved to Hara. So uh, before that, we lived in Bauria. It has a population of about 12,000 people. So not a lot of people live in Bauria. It's a very small town. You can call it a village actually, but uh, to me, it is my home city, uh, my hometown. That's where I come from. And uh, this is me when I was doing my CA. This is me. And this is me from last year in, this is I think from Chicago. So that's been my life graph. You can pretty much see the whole point of showing you this life graph was to tell you that I don't come from a background um, which has been very lavish, extensive, or I've not had a lifestyle which is um, you know, crazy. My parents are not rich. Trust me, I come from a very, very um, middle-class family. We had to struggle even to sort of make sure that you know, uh, food is visible. One of the first things that my husband noticed about this picture uh, this morning when I asked him, hey, did you see that picture? Because my mom sent it to me, I wanted it. And he said, I couldn't help notice, but your sweater is small for you and it's torn. So um, to me, that was my life. We didn't really have a lot of money. And not to say that you need a lot of money, but what I really want to tell you is that it doesn't matter where you come from. As long as you work hard, as long as you work smart, you'll get to where you want to go to. And that's what I'm going to tell you today about how is it that you can get to where you want to be with your career, with your life? How is it that you can do everything that you want to do? Oh, we're going to talk about all of that today. I just want to make one request. Everybody who's constantly sending messages on the chat, please don't. If you're raising hands, please don't because, uh, you know, it, it takes my concentration away. So don't constantly keep sending messages. Let's behave like professionals. Okay, so that's been my life journey from that little grumpy kid that you see there who was very underconfident coming from a very small village to doing my CA and I was still not very confident. You can probably see that here to becoming the person that I am right now in front of you and giving this webinar and, you know, building my own global professional brand. So far, I've worked in over 25 countries, five major continents. I've also worked in Australia. It's just that I've not traveled there, so I don't count it. But in terms of work, uh, countries, I've almost worked with um, any major country that you can name off. I probably would know something about their economy. And, and not because I'm somebody smart, it's just my work. Whatever I've done, I've actually done it as an Indian CA. 
um, I became a chartered accountant in 2013. And um, 2013 to 2015, I worked in India. 2016, I moved to the United States, worked in the US for three years. I actually got my US CPA in 2019. So even before getting my US CPA, I was uh, pretty well established where with my career, I already traveled a lot. And um, I work in internal audit and compliance. And I can tell you this, that your Indian education is robust. You don't need anything else. I know I'm probably going to, I'm probably talking about CAs, but I know a lot of people who come from different backgrounds. You don't really need a lot. There's a little bit of finesse and techniques that you need to know to build a global career. And if I can do it, you definitely can. Just look at me. I mean, I was this person <laughs> eight years back. Um, if I can go from that girl who was just not confident of talking in front of people, anyone can. And that's the whole point of this webinar. So let's talk about what are the basic essentials that you need. Well, you know, to be a good global professional or to be a good professional, irrespective of where you work, you have to have good soft skills. You have to have good interpersonal skills. Now, I don't really mean just a job. Even if you want to be an entrepreneur, even if you want to have something of your own, even if you want to be a freelancer, there is just no two way about it. You really need good soft skills. So what really are soft skills? Well, interpersonal skills or people skills. It just means that it helps you express your thoughts exactly the way you want. Now, communication is always a two way street. You may be saying something and the other person may understand something completely different. Why? Because somewhere you lack in your interpersonal skill, you lack in your people skill. You are the one who's not able to communicate what you know exactly to the person who's listening to you. So you need good soft skills so that you communicate and your audience understands exactly what you want them to understand. That's interpersonal skills. As a professional, you already have the knowledge and technical expertise in your head. And I cannot stress upon how true the statement is. One of the reasons why I do CAs abroad, that series on my YouTube, is to tell people in my field, in CA field, that CA is truly enough. Because I keep getting questions from people who keep asking me, um, Nidhi should we do CPA, Nidhi should we do CFA? Honestly, you don't need all of this. Your Indian CA is enough. You already have the knowledge and technical expertise. And for that matter, whichever field you're in, you have the expertise. It is important that as the next step, you put that knowledge out to help solve problems in real life. And how can you do that? If you're not able to communicate what is in your head, if you're not able to put that out in the real world, how are you going to win? That's why communication skills are extremely important. It is interpersonal skills. It is about how you deal with your audience. It is about how you deal with people. So to be able to put your knowledge out into the world, you need good soft skills. You have to be strong at it. And I cannot stress upon how much it is important. I come from a rural West Bengal. So of course, English is not my first language. Hindi and Marwari and Bengali were basically spoken in my house. I picked up English um, in school, of course, but I picked up most of my fluency, strength and confidence after I moved to the US. Not because you start living here and you learn, no, but because I had to work on it. I had to understand how is it that I can make my own communication skills better. So are soft skills important? Yes. What really matters is the choice of words, the kind of words that you use. Now, most people in the developed countries are very subtle. So you cannot be using aggressive words. You have to understand what are the words that you should be using to work with a global network or a global um, counterpart or a global team. Your body language is very important. You cannot be sitting like this and expecting people to think that you're confident. You cannot be shaking in an interview and expect people to think that you're a confident professional. Tone of speaking is also very important. How is it that you sound like when people talk to you on phone, when people meet you in person? Are you confident? Are you fluent? Do you make sense? Are you eating half of your words? Are you wobbling? Volume. This is something that I personally struggled with and I know a lot of people from South Asia suffer with also, um, struggle with, not suffer with. The volume of our pitch is generally high because we come from um, countries where you hear a lot of noise. So there's always, you know how in India you always have humdrum, right? Because life is still happening and busy. Here, like, people are 
a little more toned down in their volume because here it's a lot more peaceful so you don't have to be that loud so i had to really work on getting my volume down baritone how is it that your voice texture is it may sound very surprising to you but a lot of people think that they're born with it no not at all if you have the right soft skills and if you've worked on it you can improve your baritone in the end you have to sound pleasant lastly grammar skills now by grammar i don't mean fancy words i mean the basics the basics that you've learned in school adverbs pronouns nouns pronunciations proverbs punctuation marks knowing which um to apply where articles all of that just basic grammar skills all of these when combined together make sure that you have good soft skills so let's talk about building your confidence how is it that you can build your confidence and i cannot explain how much um getting confident in how i express my thoughts has made me a confident person so as long as you're able to think confidently and as long as you're able you're able to express confidently you will be a confident person well first of all use english so simple right how do you do that well the key is to be strong in using english that should be your end goal i know you may argue that why do we need to know english why can't we know our mother tongue why can't we know um any other language isn't communication just about you know knowing one language as long as i'm able to communicate with someone do i really need to know english well unfortunately the key is to be really strong in english because english is the language of the business world it's not about you and me if you want to be able to have a good global brand and a good global career you need to be good in english so you have to be able to listen read write and speak i actually did a video on that very recently and this is exactly what i followed i first listened to a lot of shows um when i moved to the us priyanka chopra's chronicle had just come out and so i listened to that a lot then i started reading so initially i would read the subtitles of the show itself then i of course started reading articles i wasn't even interested in uh, the the tough articles i would actually go to newspapers and read the entertainment and sports section that's fine too just read then i started writing so i started maintaining a small journal of my thoughts started writing cards and letters to family finally i started speaking it and now you can when you hear me across the this medium across internet i'm pretty sure i don't sound like i'm nervous or anything because i'm very confident with the language itself what i'll tell you is difficult is to start thinking in english that's where my biggest struggle was i was always able to speak in english but the problem was that i was always thinking in hindi and translating it into english that takes a lot of time so make sure that you're always um thinking in english that's going to help you that's going to also help you build a filter in your thoughts and what you speak and you eventually end up becoming um a strong speaker make sure that you're always learning continuously get together some friends you know who want to build confidence in communication skills and start communicating formally i also did that i actually got three of us came together um three of us who were new immigrants to the us and we used to do this regularly we used to have calls and make sure that you know um we're communicating we had 15 minutes for each one of us to speak every day and that's what i we did to make sure that we got fluent with the language that we were speaking very well etc if you um i mean i honestly say that get some friends who have similar uh, fears and are struggling with something similar if you cannot then build a network uh, one of the things that i am super proud of is um the with the course bridging the gap the alumni group that we have i don't even of course i do sessions with the alumni but they keep doing their own sessions they have debates they have mock interviews with each other they have group discussions um so they keep doing all of that and they are all there to help each other and you know build confidence so find people who are struggling with it and make sure that you are building your confidence together prepare in advance now you do not want to struggle on your d day you have an interview today and you're struggling in the morning trying to understand oh my god what am i going to say Yes you know the technical answers but the technical answers cannot get you through the interview you need to know answers to the behavioral questions you need to have the right body language all of that is important so make sure that you have a support system that can prepare you find yourself a mentor or find yourself a group of people who can help you maybe with a group discussion or a mock interview um i did this a lot 
I've gone into interviews, especially at the early stage of my career when I just qualified CA. I went in into interviews unprepared and I got a lot of rejection. And not to say that the people rejecting me were wrong, not at all. I wasn't a good candidate because I was just not prepared. I was, I still remember in my interviews, I would, I knew they were going to ask me, tell me something about yourself, but I never prepared my answer for that. Um, questions that they always ask, you know, like, where do you see yourself after five years? These are questions that I knew of, but I never prepared for it. And I don't know why, so I was never prepared. I didn't have a support system. I didn't have people that I was, you know, learning continuously with. So of course, I was not working the right way. And how would I ever feel confident? In my second role in India, which is, I did it for, for a month and a half, I still remember that during our weekly meetings, every time they asked me a question, I would literally shake. I've had panic attacks at work. My colleagues can literally confirm that because I was just not the person who wanted to talk. That was me four years ago. So honestly, if I'm telling you this, if I can, anyone can, you just have to work right towards it. Make sure your support system is right. Make sure the people around you are right. So what really is networking? How is it that you build a good network? You know, in a post-pandemic world, the new normal that we're entering, you're only as wealthy as your network. Never ever has it been this important. Why? Because right now, it's not about meeting people anymore. It's about the number of people you know, and you don't necessarily have to go and meet them in person. You have to build that network from a distance, and you have to have your network, because these are the only people who can vouch for you wherever you are. So, which is why if you want to be a good global professional, you need to have a good global network. And given this pandemic, I don't think even before this, I, I knew technology is important, but before this, I didn't really know how important technology is. So with everything that is on technology nowadays, the recruitments are on technology, the business opportunities are on technology, you're calling your investors on technology, you're calling your employers on technology. You really need to make sure that you have a good global brand on the technology itself. If you're looking to go global, networking is a must. You cannot expect to sit behind a computer and think that, oh, something magically will pop up. Doesn't happen that way, trust me. Networking, so what really is it? Let's define it. Networking is building a professional relationship that lasts long. And how do they happen? Well, they happen when you're building a non-transactional relationship with someone. So which also means that if somebody is sending you a message saying, dear sir, ma'am, please find my CV attached, that's not networking. If you're connecting with someone, try to know who they are. Try to talk to them. Try to understand their career paths. Try to build a non-transactional relationship. Don't make that one connection about a job because that's never going to work in your favor. What you really need to do is make a relationship, build a relationship out of it. I've gotten innumerable opportunities and I've been able to help innumerable people because of the network that I have. Not because I'm someone very smart, no, but because I know that people want to be treated the way, um, you should be treating people the way you want to be treated. Would you want somebody six years later to just send you a message that, hey, I need a job, get me a job? No, right? You wouldn't want to talk to that person. You wouldn't want to feel that you want to help that person as opposed to 20 other people who genuinely want to know who you are, what is it that you do in your career, and how is it that you both can come together and help each other out. So treat people the way you want them to treat you. That's the key of networking. If you understand that, you're good at it. So how to network? I'm going to tell you use LinkedIn. Why? See, there are too many apps and I've used them. I've used a meetup. So that's, that's one of the apps where you can have meetups with people. And I've done that. I've used it in India, US, and Canada. I don't think it's that effective. Um, somebody in my Bridging the Gap uh, course had once said that he used something called Shapo. Um, again, not something that has the reach of LinkedIn. Why? Because LinkedIn has over 690 plus million users. You get everybody in the same place. You get employees, you get employers, you get recruiters, entrepreneurs, freelancers, all in one place. And the best part about LinkedIn is you get to drive your own career. You get to be what you want to be. Isn't that the most important at the end of the day? So you get to network with the people that you want to network with. 
which is all of these. So it's not restricted. It's not restricted to an age group. It's not restricted to a gender. It's not restricted to a country, city, um, field, nothing. You can reach out to anyone and you can build your network with anyone on a platform like LinkedIn. So make sure you're using LinkedIn very smartly. So what are the do's and don'ts of global networking uh, platform? So if you are on LinkedIn, what is it that you should do to make sure that um, nothing is going wrong? Well, keep a smart headshot, no selfies, no group pictures, no family pictures. Use a headline that's attractive. So headline is the line that you see right below your name. Make sure that that is attractive. Now, if you're a college student, you can still make it attractive. Just put BCom or you know BBA or if you're a doctor, MBBS. Um, slash uh, any college team that you're a part of slash your interests make sure you make that attractive i've actually had um one of my um, course takers in bridging the gap in bash 3 was actually a high school student so he was in class 12 and we couldn't believe that he was in class 12 because he had a linkedin profile and he had it super updated and when i went to his linkedin profile it said high school student slash this 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 slash this 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 I was so impressed that I went and I actually told him that I cannot believe how invested he is in his career. He's doing everything right, even when he's in class 12. Why should you and I not be doing these things right? So make sure you have a smart headshot. You don't need a professional picture, not at all. If you cannot afford a professional picture, that's fine. Stand in front of a plain uh, background, like a plain wall. Get somebody to click your picture, put it up. Make sure that you're not you know, wearing anything crazy. You want all the attention on your face. Use a headline that's attractive. Keep an interesting bio. Don't use words like motive is strong, motivated individual, um, self-motivated, etc. Honestly, you have to be self-motivated. If you're not, who else is going to motivate you? Stay engaged on the platform. Make sure that you like, share, comment, post all of this. Not because um, you know, not because it's going to help you crazy or something. The way LinkedIn algorithms work is when a recruiter is looking for, say, a CEO or a CPA, uh, and if you have that on your profile, then as long as you are an active user of LinkedIn, your, pro, um, your profile will come up first, right? Like in the search toolbar, as active your profile is, the more active your profile is, the more chances of you going to be um, on the top of the search toolbar. So make sure you're using LinkedIn well, because uh, not only because you can get to network, but also because your chances of getting views from recruiters and employers are going to increase drastically. What you should not do is definitely don't put uh, silly videos like TikTok and all of that. Um, I know it's probably banned in India, but here it's not. Any, any silly video that you're sharing, any silly post that you're sharing, don't do it. Why? Because um, recruiters can get actually a whole and you know you have your activity log right even you can see it you can see anybody's activity log people see that before interviewing or hiring so you want your activity log to be clean don't comment on political posts don't comment on um something that's too religious don't post things like that because there are two things that are completely unacceptable in the west talking about religion talk, talking about politics in a professional form um a forum and on a professional platform so those things are a strict no-no. So don't do that on LinkedIn because you don't know who's viewing your profile and you don't want to lose that one chance that you could have gotten um, just because you did something silly without knowing it. So engage with the right content. Yes, please, please, please post a lot. You need to have a good network. And what happens is when you post something and somebody in your network engages with your content, their network is also able to see um, your posts. And then you're able to really leverage a very wide network. You know, you're able to leverage your network's network and their network and their network, etc. So make sure that you're staying active and engaging with the right kind of content. Now let's come to how to find global opportunities. Well, first of all, of course, networking, build a global network and leverage their network. The more people you know, the more exponentially you grow. So simple. I'm going to give you a couple of examples, but the first one that comes to my mind is actually about um, this one young girl for whom, um, I, I mean, she was going through something really rough in her personal life. And um, I wanted to help her just on a personal level, not somebody that I know at all, somebody that I know through LinkedIn. So I 
made sure that she was fine personally first. And then I had to make sure that she has a job. I don't really share profiles of people that I don't trust or don't know well. I've gotten to know her over three, four months. So then I finally went and I asked my network if somebody could, you know, share, um, provide her an opportunity. She, believe it or not, she's an Indian CA uh, who wasn't working for some reason because of a personal problem in life. Um, she got her first job in Bombay itself, stayed there for what, about two to three months. And then her second job was in Europe. And um, that's all it took, one post. Um, they sponsored her visa. I, I still have her offer letter. I'm still the proudest of the fact that she was able to get a good global opportunity, not because I'm somebody who's great. No, not at all. Because when she got that opportunity, she leveraged it the right way and she used LinkedIn the right way. So make sure you have a global network so that when you are looking for opportunities, your global network can help you with opportunities that are available worldwide. Cultural differences. You have to understand that the country that you come from, which is our home country, is very different from the global world. There are cultural differences. If you're going to try to use your, um, say I'm from India, this is a mistake that I did. I did not understand boundary in conversations because in India, we don't really have boundary in conversations. When I moved to the US, I did not realize how uncomfortable I made people feel because I did not try to learn about their culture. All that I tried to do was live my way, the only way that I knew. If you're networking in a global world, you should approach it globally. Get comfortable with stock, small talk. Talk less about you. Hear more about them. Talk to them about their world. Because only then will they be interested in your world and only then will they be interested in sharing opportunities with you or referring your profile somewhere. Get interested in how is it that you know, a certain country works. For example, if you want to move to the US, make sure that you are understanding the culture in the US because as much as you and I want to constantly preserve what we've learned and dump it and take it with us, that's not how it works. So when you're sending messages to people like, dear sir, ma'am, please find my resume attached, it will hardly get you anywhere because that's not how things work here. You have to know the people. It's as simple as that. And I've also had people send me messages and ask me, Nithi, do you have any contacts? Wrong word. Don't use words like that. Understand that this is a very different system. Things work differently. Nobody's going to tell you how things work here. It's upon you to find out how things work here if you're the one who wants to move here. Same if you want to move to Europe, find people in Europe, network with them, understand the culture and understand that you come from a different culture and it will take adjustment. What are the global fields that you can get into easily? Audit followed by consulting. I think audit by far is the most fluid field. Um, I would also say that bookkeeping, accounting, financial reporting are equally global, but I've not seen as much uh, movement as I've seen in audit. Consulting, extremely fluid. International tax and transfer pricing extremely fluid. Um, so these are three fields that if you're working in, I don't think that you'll have problems in finding opportunities internationally. Um, yes, followed by this is like I said, bookkeeping, fin reporting, all of that. If you're working in direct taxes, it's going to be difficult because direct taxes is so country based. Unless you're working in a separate country's direct taxes, unless you're doing that, then you're fine. But um, if you're doing, say, suppose if you're doing Indian direct taxation, the chances of you getting an opportunity is difficult, right? Because how do you replicate that field here? So um, find fields that are global, find people who've been able to make that move and then see how you can make it, learn from there, um, learn from them. And of course, you can always go to LinkedIn. Indeed, these are great platforms to find opportunities and to apply for them. So I get this question so often, what skills or degrees do I need to get global? And at least for people who are Indian CAs, um, the question that I get asked the most is, if I do US CPA, can I get a job in the US? The answer is no, because education and immigration are completely different. Immigration is independent of education. Independent is getting a visa, uh, immigration is getting a visa, you know, work permit, all of that. That is completely divorced from the education system, unless you come and study here. If you're coming and studying here, then yes, that is a pathway where the two mix, 
if you're not, if you're studying from India, no, there is no direct pathway to get a job here because you still need to go through immigration, which a lot of companies are worried of. And when it comes to immigration, you as a USCPA and you as an, and anyone else as an Indian CA stand similar. So if I'm an employer, to me, there is no difference between hiring a USCPA from India or hiring a CA from India. There's no difference because I still have to do the same level of paperwork for them. So immigration is completely different. There is no degree that you need to be very honest. And I've already mentioned, I do see as abroad only because I know that there is no degree that you need. I actually have two more interviews scheduled today. Um, CA is abroad. I'm trying to find people in different fields, in different countries. And I want uh, this to be our, you know, very well known that you don't really need any other degree. Our Indian education is truly robust. We're technically skilled. Think of it, if you're in finance, and I know I'm probably talking more about finance, but this is a field that I really know about. I've worked in five continents and I've never seen people um, who are from India failing. Because do debits and credits really change? Does golden rule of accounting really change? Um, if you're gonna debit bank when cash is coming in in India, you're also gonna debit bank when cash is coming in in Canada. It's so simple. The basics don't change. So focus on being technically skilled. What you do need is confidence in translating those skills. You cannot be underconfident. And that is the biggest gap that professionals have in the West. We're not confident. You have to be confident. You have to be as confident as the people here. You need to have a solid global network. I'm going to give you a personal experience. When we decided to move to Canada, my employer offered to transfer my payroll from the US. So in March 2019, we'd visited Canada for a day. And um, I was just telling my husband, I was like, you know what, I do want to tell my um, on my network on LinkedIn that I'm moving. I wasn't very active on LinkedIn. I didn't have as much you know, connections as I have today. This was March, 2019. The post is still up. If you go and see it, so I, there's a Toronto sign and I'd taken a picture in front of it wearing a green sweater. Um, so I posted that. I just wanted to let my network know that I'm moving. There is no mention of me asking for a job. And I say this to every person in Bridging Gap also that I got 22 plus interview messages. And here, getting an interview uh, call or an interview message is the most important thing because um, you can easily make it to the, uh, from the interview, it's not very difficult because people here don't have time to interview a lot of people. They'll interview a selective few and then you know they'll hire one of them. So I got so many messages even without looking for a job. And why did that happen? Because I'd already started building a global network. The fact that we were going to move to Canada, uh, we decided at end of 2018. So we knew we we're gonna do this in summer of 2019. So might as well start building the network. So I started building my network in Canada. And then when I posted that, and when I let them know, they'd always seen me through the medium of LinkedIn. These are not people that I've met. These are not people that, of course, I've had conversations with them, uh, but these are not people that I had you know, met personally or I had spoken to personally. So many of them messaged for job opportunities. And countless other people messaged for lunch, coffee chat, etc. Why? Because I had a global network and I'd already built that faith uh, here in Canada. So you, all that you need is making sure that you're confident enough to go and talk to anyone and everyone uh, from any country and every country and to know that you will still be able to make an impact, to have a good global network. Um, of course, additional skills always help. If you're not able to invest a lot of money, then I would say go to Coursera, Udemy. These are places that I've personally gone to and I've gotten a few courses in. Um, honestly, the ones that I think are most relevant today, at least in finance, is financial modeling, data analytics, all of that. So you have some free courses there, go and get it. Don't put it on LinkedIn as if you're not using it, to be very honest, because LinkedIn is all about the work experience that you have. So if you don't have work experience in something, don't necessarily put that uh, topic in. But try to find ways to use it in your work. Try to maybe like freelance on it or something like that. So that then you're able to really say that, yes, I work in it. You know, I freelance in it. So additional skills always help. What you also need is to understand that... Um, Okay, I, people may not take it the right way, but you have to be patient 
and you have to understand that this takes time and people invest their time and also people invest money. So you have to find ways to do both. A lot of people tell me and they send me a message that, you know, um, hey, Nidhi, I just started working. I'm trying to build up my savings. So I don't want to spend, um, you know, 200 uh, rupees on a certificate course on LinkedIn or 500 on a certificate course on LinkedIn. So what is it that I should do? But honestly, if, if you're not able to shell out even 100 rupees for a course that you really like on LinkedIn learning platform, then that's a question that you need to ask yourself. That if I cannot really put in so much time or even the basic amount of efforts and the basic amount of, you know, um, uh, just efforts required, then what is it that is not working? Clearly your efforts, right? Like something, we're missing something. So you need to understand that it's going to take time and you have to make sure that you're putting in the efforts right. I'm not saying do something crazy. No, don't do crazy expensive courses or anything. Do free courses wherever you can. I do it too. But invest time, most importantly, and figure out where you lack and invest if you see that there are courses that you really like. That's, I mean, it's okay to spend, you know, 100 on LinkedIn Learning. That's fine. Don't constantly keep thinking about Oh, is it going to be worth it at the end of the day? It's going to be worth it. Trust me, it always is. So what are the key takeaways from today's session? Well, the world has changed. We have to adapt. There is a new normal now, and it's not going anywhere. We have to adapt. Be smart about it. Don't think that you're going to sit behind a computer, um, comment on six posts on LinkedIn, and get a job. Not how it works. You have to constantly engage and build a network of your own. Plan and execute well. Have a goal plan. Have your career planned out in front of you. What is it that you want to do after five years? Where is it that you want to be after seven years? Have some sort of a plan or some sort of an understanding of what is it that you want to do. Learn to invest efforts. By efforts, what I mean is real efforts. If you're sending a message to someone that, hey, please find my resume attached and give me a job, not going to work. You need to work on building a transactional relationship. Be patient. If people don't respond to you, it's not because you don't deserve a response um, or you're not a bad person or something like that. If people are not responding to you because probably because they're busy or because they have um, you know, a lot more people to respond to or they feel that their response is not going to answer your question. So if you message 10 people, one of, of them on LinkedIn will respond. So be patient about it. But in the end, build a personality that no one can say no to. It doesn't matter where you work, India, US, Canada, Europe, Australia, Asia, Southeast Asia. You could be wanting to work anywhere and everywhere, Latin America. As long as you have a personality that is adaptable, that is global, and that can truly attract uh, attention and arrest the attention as well, you'll be fine. In the end, nobody cares about how many attempts you have in your CA finals. Nobody cares about what exact degree did you have? Which exact college did you go to? How much you scored in your 12 boards? No, no one cares about that. What really matters is what have you been able to do with that education? Have you been able to create a global brand for yourself? Have you been able to become an asset that is going to add value to any employer that they go to? If no, then you need to start working on it. And if yes, you'll find opportunities. That's where you have to get. Don't look at it as one job. Think about your career. Your career is about 40 years from now. If you build a good global brand today, this will keep you going for the next 40 years. So it's not about the first job or the second or the next job. It's about the jobs that will follow. Um, that was my conversation today. I do want to thank you for taking out time. If you have questions, please leave them in the chat. Uh, I'm going to respond. I'll also put this up on YouTube so that, you know, if people want to go and comment and I'll be able to respond. So, um, a lot of, you know, me from LinkedIn also. So that's my LinkedIn, uh, Insta. A lot of, you know, me from there as well. And I know a lot of people are saying that they're not able to hear it. So don't worry. They have, um, I'll be putting it up on YouTube. Um, Saurav is asking, I missed the initial part. 
yes, of course, um, you will have this on YouTube. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Any questions that I can answer for you? And uh, what books to read to enhance communication skills, Megha? Honestly, there is no particular book. What you just need to do is read what you like. I started off with the entertainment section because I couldn't read a lot. But now I'm an avid reader, probably because I'm getting old. Um, but really read whatever you enjoy. You don't really have to read a particular self-help book or anything like that. Because reading is all about building your confidence in the language. Mohini, when will you schedule the next Bridging the Gap session? Oh, we have batch six that starts on 20th July. Um, we have, I think, one or two seats left. So we're generally completely sold out. Himani, thank you for the insightful session. I'm glad it helped. Ujwal, ma'am, how to network? I'm a very shy person. Ujwal, I've shown you my pictures. You can imagine how shy I was. Start with just sending messages to people on LinkedIn and you'll get responses and that will make you confident. How to start building network on LinkedIn? I think I mentioned it a couple of times engage on the platform, post, like, comment, connect with people. Um, that's what you need to do at the end of the day. Deepak, I have a question. Would it be worth doing industrial training considering the situation? Of course it is. It's always worth doing anything different. Don't think about, oh my God, is it going to get me somewhere in my career? Because the goal in life is not to always get something in your career, um, somewhere in your career. It's definitely gonna get you to places. So don't worry about that. Um, Gurmil, thank you. Could you please cover CFA and FRM? I'm doing, I have a video on CFA on my YouTube. I'm doing a video on CFA on FRM as well. So, um, that's definitely going to help you. What can be the headline for CA aspirant? Um, your college name, if you've gone to college slash your CA aspirant slash maybe, um, you know, in what field you're interested in after that. Any website to practice English by talking? There are some apps like Duolingo, etc., Yashwant, but I honestly don't think they help. You can try it. Nitish, can you brief about bridging the gap? Well, it's one of the courses that I created because um, a lot of people like me struggle with um, bringing up confidence, and it's about it's, it's super cheap. The only reason why I do it is because I want people who are invested in their career and I want to build a group. So it's about seven days. We you cannot attend live. That's fine. Recorded sessions are available. Um, and then we do a lot of coursework. You do mock interviews, you do group discussions, you do. Um, we talk very in detail about using LinkedIn, about the actual global opportunities that are available. I also have alumni sessions with people just the other day. There are, there are two opportunities that were available in Canada for relocation. So I forwarded it to them. Um, and yeah, it is all about building your communication skills. We've had five batches so far, about 112 people have taken it. So in just what, a month and a half. So it's probably the, the thing that I'm proudest of because I know a lot of people struggle with it. When I started off, like I said, I couldn't speak in meetings. It was difficult for me. And I wish I had a mentor or somebody that I could always ask questions to. Why do? Um, I had one question. I'm pursuing CA finals and want to go abroad for future career opportunities. What else? Honestly, there's no other updated, like you don't have to be on social media. LinkedIn is not social media, first of all. So don't treat it like social media. And this is the only place I'm going to advise you to stay active on. Chandni, does IELTS help? No, not at all. It doesn't help in getting global opportunities. All right, one more minute, guys. And then, because it's already 40 minutes, so I'll turn this off. But let's see. <laughs> Malay, can you let us know how to write a proper CV and what points to consider in it? I'm doing a session with um, a friend of mine who's 
who's who's actually in talent acquisition has had tremendous experience in uk and india um he's in canada right now so i'm going to be doing that of course it is well it's going to be for bridging the gap people uh, but i'll i'll try to include more people in it Ayushi, your stories sound like Priyanka Chopra. Not at all. Priyanka Chopra is a star. I'm not. Ritika, Nidhi, I lot, uh, lack a lot of confidence and think a lot before speaking professionally. Um, how do I work on it? Honestly, Ritika, there's, I wish I could tell you that there is a way to do it better, but the only way to do it is to do it. You have to take that risk. Um, so that's why I did not have anyone when I started off. When, when I created Bridging the Gap, I really wanted people to have a space where they can communicate. Now, you know i've been this is this is one group that helps each other out if anybody has an interview they'll schedule a mock interview with him um they'll help people talk uh so find i'm not saying do a, any course or anything find people like yourself find your friends i'm sure there are friends who are also struggling find them and build your network build a small group uh not just network i'd say build a small group of people who struggle with something similar and then do it do it more often i mean honestly i wish i could tell you that there is a better way to do it i've been there i know how it feels i know how underconfident uh one feels when they don't think they can communicate well so i wish i could tell you that there is something some other way but no honestly not akshay will it help will it be helpful to subscribe for premium services from nokrian linkedin i don't think so i mean, you don't need it I've already shared the headline for CPA aspirant. Um, so Tavisha, how do we exactly start a conversation with somebody we don't know on LinkedIn? Well, try to approach them on a topic like on a recent post of theirs or about their profile or something like that. Um, you know, of course, there's a lot of way to do small talk. So don't talk about just job, talk about their career, their profile, their lives, etc. Don't get too personal. Of course, there's a boundary, um, but yes, get comfortable with the small talk. That'll help. And like I said, talk to them about their posts, profile, something like that, or qualifications. All right, guys, on that note, thank you so much. I know there is a lot more question left. I'll be putting this up on YouTube. You can also shoot me a questions on Instagram if you want, Nidhi Nagori 29. Send it to me on LinkedIn if you want. Facebook, YouTube, there's so many avenues. Most importantly, um, stay invested in your career. What you really need is just to be confident. That's it. Nothing else. You're good enough. And I'm telling you this because I've been there and nobody told me this and I entered a phase of self-doubt. I don't want you to do it. I want you to believe in yourself. You're good enough. And as long as you work hard and you work smart, you'll get to where you want to get to. On that note, take care, have a great weekend and stay safe. Bye.